in a new adventure into the loot box realm, the team behind the popular online ARPG Path of Exile grinding gear games have managed to earn quite the backlash from their audience. So far, so microtransactions, but what's a bit different is that the grinding gear team have somewhat of a redemptive arc because they took player feedback on board and they removed it from sale within three hours of release. The developer have a pronounced dedication to transparency and a strong reputation within their community. But this story begs the question, just how much can a free-to-play developer actually get away with? Hey everyone and welcome back to another Industry Report, the series where we cherry pick the most interesting stories and take a deeper dive into them. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe and ring that bell if you enjoy our content and would actually like to find it in the future. Recommended videos are, uh, you know, a little bit squiffy in YouTube and uh, sometimes subscriptions and bell rings are basically just the only thing we can do these days. Now, with all of that said, let's get on to Path of Exile. Now, if you're not clued up in the Path of Exile stuff and, uh, well, going by the size of its player base, that means you might live in one of Jupiter's moons, allow me to catch you up. Path of Exile is a hardcore ARPG that basically has just captured the hardcore Diablo audience, just having more content, more depth, more customization, but the game is also free to play. It's most certainly, though, not pay to win. The extent of the unlocks in the game are, well, it's a dizzying array of cosmetics and quality of life upgrades, and they're all really the standard fare. Character skins, item skins, weapon skins, pets, home-based decoration, all that stuff that has zero impact on moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but do serve to add an element of customization should the player wish it. This is, of course, a pretty reasonable way of doing things, but it's a free-to-play game, and the developers of the game do need to work out how they can support themselves financially. So far, this all seems seems good, right? But given that I'm talking about this, well, they've no doubt stepped into a perilous territory. So, as with any game that has loot box-based unlocks, duplicate items have been uh, quite a thorn in the side of many Path of Exile players. Now, the reason is that they've got no use, they can't be sold, they can't be traded in, they just sit around in your inventory taunting you. Not really that good. So, the developers introduced a new type of loot box, the Salvage Box. Now, the item description on the website is a little bit verbose, but the TLDR version is that this salvage box would drop one common tier item from any previous wave of unlocks, provided said item was not marked as an exclusive to a certain type of other loot box. And to explain that, Path of Exile tends to release a new type of box alongside each new in-game event, and certain items are exclusive. Now, the other use of the salvage box is the problem one. So it was to offer players a way of getting rid of duplicate items. The box offered players the ability to destroy a duplicate microtransaction in order to increase the tier of item contained within the salvage box. Now, this functionality was strictly limited to dupes, so you weren't able to just swap out you like a merely unwanted item. Now, the salvage box cost 30 points, $3, at the time of release, and uh, as mentioned, though, it was essentially useless without you pumping dupes into it, because the prospect of a non-exclusive common tier item, well, that just wasn't really that exciting. Now, this meant that in order to get any type of satisfactory reward from the loot box, players would have needed to factor in the value of their duped microtransactions which served to inflate, effectively, the price of the salvage box by a significant margin. Now, as you're probably aware, players were uh, less than enthused by this new mystery box. For many people, the introduction of the salvage box just crossed the line from keeping the lights on and supporting yourselves and being reasonable to sheer greed. Discussion on Reddit was lively, with some commentators stating their belief that the box should be a feature in the game by default, as opposed to a paid extra, as being able to recycle dupes for free would be a welcome quality of life addition to the game. Others were then quick to point out another flaw in this system, where the salvage box could be used to recycle duplicate items into a new item, but there is no guarantee that that new item itself would not be a duplicate. So one Reddit user detailed how they purchased the salvage box to recycle 150 points worth of items and just got an item they already had. Now, keep in mind the salvage box itself uh, is 30 uh, in-game points, so this Reddit user essentially put $18 of value into getting a dupe. Now, this user's experience has also shown a spotlight on another significant criticism of the salvage box, that it was specifically targeted at experienced players, but wasn't really worth their time or money. Typically, microtransactions in a game like this can be purchased by anyone in the player base, even a new player, you know, so that somebody, say, gets emotionally invested in playing the game, decides, yeah, I will support this, and they throw in some money to a loot box or whatever. Uh, that's sort of how that stuff had worked. But the thing with the salvage box is, you know, in order to have the dupes to be able to feed the salvage box, you have to be 
be a pretty darn experienced player. Somebody who, at the very least, had purchased a lot of microtransactions. Now, these players who had supported the studio a lot felt particularly aggrieved, and some basically believed that their support was being exploited a bit. They believed that a box aimed at experienced players should be much more of a reward for their investment rather than what the salvage box actually offered people. Now, the reason these experienced players were so annoyed at the salvage box was that uh, they were so invested in the game itself. Grinding Gear games have an almost unique reputation in that they appear to be genuinely loved by their player base. With Path of Exile, they have endeavored to offer really good quality entertainment for free with lots of updates and the microtransactions being an optional means of supporting the game's continued development. Indeed, many Reddit users were saying that they are entirely happy to spend money in the game to support the developers after the hours and hours of free entertainment that they've received from it. And this is really why the salvage box just seemed like such a kick in the teeth, as it looked like their support was being exploited rather than rewarded. Now, the good news here is that Grinding Gear took notice and they removed the salvage boxes from sale after only three hours following um, just the player base's reaction to it. The team are committed to transparent communications. They've proved that again. And on a number of occasions, they have taken to Reddit to address things like particular, you know, concerns that people have with the game and burning questions. So it's nice to see that that has continued, especially when their bottom line was involved. It's entirely possible the salvage boxes may return to Path of Exile one day, but the hope among the player base is that the item will be implemented in a vastly different way. Grinding Gear seem open to player feedback and uh, going off their track record of listening, I think they're more than likely to incorporate this into the final product in the future in some way. I think I don't like loot boxes at all, but if there are to be dupes, there probably should be some sort of, uh, you know, dupe currency. At the very least, I think the team are obviously aware that people want to actually do something with their dupes. So uh, yeah, maybe the salvage box coming back in a reasonable fashion that's not just an additional upsell, maybe that would actually work. Now, what's remarkable about this is there appears to be no lingering resentment from players. Very different to say if, uh, you know, this happened in Call of Duty Black Ops 4, as an example. The salvage box was released, the PoE player base said no, and the developer pretty much went okay and removed the box and everything seems to be fine again, which is rather surreal and really just goes to show how much support grinding gear have. And it's interesting, this dedication to transparency, it's often, well, offered by devs in the game industry, but it's almost never received, and the willingness shown by the team at Grinding Gear is uh, as admirable as it is unique. It's nice to see this stuff actually working. The team has made numerous missteps in the past, but they seem to have always issued apologies and taken the right uh, sort of correcting uh, move afterwards. They then, of course, also ingratiated themselves to their community after their rejection of the idea of crunch. A few months ago, lead developer Chris Wilson made a statement on Reddit that addressed the industry topic of crunch, saying that he would not run the company that way. He went on to say that while a bit of optional overtime is always inevitable when it comes to a busy period such as a launch of a new event, quote, the vast majority of Path of Exile development cycle has great work-life balance. Many people applauded this focus on staff well-being in a time where the broader industry seemed to just view it as a totally disposable thing. And uh, that, again, stood the developer in further good stead with their community, which obviously is something that I think paid off having a very real value for them here, because they've managed to sidestep this without taking a permanent hit. It appears that Cantor and a willingness to change can actually work wonders for a company who is running a free-to-play game. And I suppose if you're doing free-to-play, community matters a hell of a lot. And another example of this going well is with Warframe, Digital Extremes Free-to-Play space shooter. And uh, that's a game that follows a similar model to Path of Exile, where they're both free to play, but neither are pay to win. And uh, yeah, this is all served to endear Warframe to its player base and encourage financial support through microtransactions. Now, one such microtransaction in the past did prove very problematic with Warframe, and it revolved around the ability to customize your pet. So in the pets, or Kubrows, if uh, were to be fancy, that's what they're called in game, when they were first introduced to Warframe, players had the option of paying premium currency in order to random generate a new fur pattern. Now, this cost 10 platinum, which is about 67 cents US, and it was intended to give people greater freedom for customization because the unwanted patterns could then be traded between players. Well, studio manager Sheldon Carter revealed during an episode of Danny O'Dwyer's No Clip documentary series that one player spun the wheel, quote, like 200 times. And it was at this point that Carter said the team at Digital Extremes realized they created a slot machine and they promptly removed the feature in an effort to protect players. Players. And Carter still cites this feature as being one of his biggest regrets with the game, saying that while the feature was extremely lucrative, it went completely against the intent of the Kubros, the new pets, and at Warframe itself. 
And if grinding gear and digital extremes have taught us anything, it is that, yeah, valuing your staff and communicating with your player base and being willing to recognize when something is not working out in the eyes of your fans, that that is a really, really important thing that I think does have a genuine dollar value because they've not taken hits from their blunders. Free-to-play games do operate on a knife edge where the continued life of the game depends on financial support, where the developer can't just literally ask for money that, you know, somebody pays for the game, which is a bit wild. Indeed, the developers have got to work with players in order to create an environment that everybody is comfortable with. This certainly is a difficult thing to do, and mistakes, uh, well, can be, will be, and already have been made. It's the developer's reputation that saved them in this instance, and both Path of Exile and Warframe seem to have incredibly dedicated fans who are willing to forgive. But that said, we do still have to be critical and skeptical. It's always possible that Grinding Gear Games knew this would, uh, well, be risky, but also knew they had goodwill, and decided let's cash in that goodwill and launch a test. If the community accept this, it'll make a lot of money. If not, well, they'll probably forgive us anyway, so why not try? You could argue that in a case where you do have that goodwill, it's possible for a developer to try to, you know, just sort of push the boat out a little bit. Uh, and that they could have done that. And maybe that was a part of their thinking, but I would not want to be too speculative. It's just worth remembering that whenever a company shows like goodwill to their community, that's really good, but you still do have to, uh, you know, keep everything in mind. And I suppose that's just always the danger of, well, fanboyism and fan culture. But this is a case where that didn't happen. Yes, even though people would be fans of Path of Exile, they still were able to be critical about it and uh, yeah, be very reasonable as it seems. So a very interesting situation. This is definitely the type of open dialogue that I wish more developers would have uh, with their community, and even if missteps were to be made, I'd vastly, vastly prefer something like the communication we see here as compared to what you get with traditional AAA, which is uh, very, very different from this indeed. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and with that, I will see you next time.